walking on private land. Permission granted. So the route I created at home before the hike from Glacier Trailhead to Jackson ended up passing through a private ranch. And we stopped in the office, talked to the owner, and he gave us permission to pass through. And not only that, they gave us a huge loaf of coffee cake to pack out and topped off our water. And for the record, the route we're hiking through here is not the most efficient. Instead of ending our last section at Glacier Trailhead, resupplying in Dubois, the most direct path would have been to drop down off the divide somewhere west of Continental Glacier, head down to Green River Lakes, resupply in Pinedale. But that's predictable, and where's the adventure in that? Ah, shit. Nice. Looks like we got another cut <laughs> to match that one. <laughs> Actually, the first time I've ever used super glue for a cut. Have you guys used it? Yeah. 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 Works pretty good. Okay. All right, good as new. I guess. Oh my gosh, all my chocolates! You can see they're all melted. Yeah. And I have all chocolate. I want white chocolate. So at the end of our last section, we were approaching Glacier Trailhead early evening. We could see cars pulling away and we were just worried we'd be stuck without a hitch into town. So Hopeful ran about a mile downhill to the trailhead just in time to catch this truck on his way out. Hopeful says, uh, hey, are you going to do, boys? The real calm, cool cowboy type. Turns around real slow, reaches into the cooler in his back seat, hands him a beer. Guy says, I live in Du Bois. Hop in. And of course, he waited for Katie and I to come down the hill, gave us a beer as well. Best tasting Keystone Light of my life. <laughs> but Du Bois was a good town stop. Uh, we stayed at the Black Bear Inn, very hiker friendly, highly recommend it. The motel's right on a river, it's got a barbecue area, picnic table, hammocks, great place to relax. So great we spent two full zeros there, but we really needed it after the winds. And we're still in the winds actually, uh, all day yesterday and at least all day today. Uh, once we get down, yeah, there's a, like a one mile, two mile stretch without a trail. Well, now we're following Roaring Fork River. We're gonna follow this for about 14 miles until we reach Green River. I think it goes more than seven feet. I thought it said to spray it when the bear gets like 30 feet away or something. So it goes into a cloud that, you know, it then runs into. Right, you want to build a wall. You want to spray a wall between you and the bear. still following Roaring Fork, but once we ford Green River uh, later this morning, we'll officially be out of the winds. And today is our 13th day in the winds. So we definitely got the full experience here. And even after all this time, it's still hard to leave, especially with several hours of road walking ahead. Yeah, it didn't look like it. It's just wide, so it's sort of intimidating because of the width of the river. Yeah, but the rocks aren't slippery, so you can move pretty 
Yeah, I mean, you documented Katie, right? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, getting that right? Yeah, getting ice cubes and bourbon. No, I didn't, but... Getting steaks and butter. Getting foot rubs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Hopeful and I have a pretty similar set of rules we set for ourselves on our through hike, which is continuous footsteps to Canada. Katie, on the other hand, is more or less out here to enjoy the experience, so she doesn't mind skipping roadwalks if the opportunity presents itself. And that's just what she did. She hitched a head up the road and will meet us at the bridge we're looking for that crosses over the Green River. Why am I walking this road right now? It doesn't even lead to Canada. We're heading west. Oh my, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. You want us all in it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, countdown. Okay. Well, I don't know if there's a flash. Uh, let's just keep smiling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, how long do we wait? It's like I'm a sunglasses. Yeah, uh -huh. it's it's yeah. Something yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I think it's already happened. I think, I it's, think happened. it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great video, guys. This is the longest <laughs> 10 seconds I've ever made. Yeah. Yeah. Pictures the whole time. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Thanks for sitting and talking to us. I'm glad you figured that out. Cheers, my friend. Can yeah, a like water bottle, a beer can. Yeah. <laughs> and just be like. That looks like a beer can. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, it's a little presumptuous. <laughs> I don't know if I'd stop if somebody held a beer can upside down. I'd probably say fuck that. But... <laughs> like, hey, look, I'm out of beer. Someone beer me. I'm out of beer. It's a little presumptuous. Yeah, <laughs> it might only work with certain vehicles. That's cool. Yeah, that, that definitely doesn't look normal. I'm not sure I'd want to get my water from this. Well, it's pretty much the only bridge that goes across the Green River for, I don't know, quite a ways. We walked all the way down here to cross it and it probably wasn't necessary, but uh, here we are. And uh, I don't know, probably seven or eight miles from the Grovant Wilderness at this point. It should be over there, so. It's gonna be interesting. Nobody really seems to know anything about it. Not even the locals we've talked to, so really not sure what to expect and uh, what it's gonna look like and how it's gonna be, but it's always an adventure. So the Grovant, what's up with that name, right? Well. It's pronounced Grovant, but spelled like Gross Venture. So that's what we've been calling it, Gross Venture. The gateway to the Grovant. Okay. Yeah, we got some wow. that's a nice bear prints here. Bear print, bear print, bear print. Bear. <laughs> Assert your dominance by slapping it in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so we're hiking up uh, Tosi Creek this morning and we just crossed into the uh, Gross Venture, or as some say, the Grovant. So you're gonna sit in it, right? It's a very tetanus -y looking uh, seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo! Well, the trail's pretty much been on and off lately. Lots of animal signs so far, and Hopeful saw what was likely a bobcat earlier during our water break, so it was pretty cool.
In a hot spring? <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want to fall in there. Oh, you could easily climb out. Uh, so we just crested this uh, unnamed pass high in Tosi Creek Basin, and now we're heading towards Double Top Peak and Triangle Peak. Looks like quite a bit of cross-country travel ahead. <laughs> so much for daily mileage goals. <laughs> this is a good story. <laughs> So we're working our way around the uh, northeast side of Double Top Peak now. Damn, all these rocks are sharp as hell. It's pretty slow going. Following this ridge line uh, west of Triangle Peak, the west side is basically sheer cliffs, so we're walking along the top, looking for a route down that's not suicidal. Pretty awesome views, though. Gap blocking. Oh, this isn't that bad. No? Well, now that I cleared these rocks off, it isn't. <laughs> it actually is kind of gross. No, it's really good. <laughs> Where is it we're getting? Yeah, we're going right down there in that pass, and then we're gonna hopefully drop down. Well, this area did not look this tough on the map. The topos are very deceiving here. I mean, we can do it, dude. It's gonna hurt. Like, we can get down there, and then that's gonna be sketchy, and then we're gonna have to drop like five or ten feet, and then slide down the dirt mound. We can do it. Yeah, I think it's. I think it definitely looks doable. It's from here. It's kind of hard to tell, but I. I can see. I can see some shelves, and yeah, I don't think it's gonna be that. And it looks like you've got like decent handholds and stuff when you're doing those dog climbs. Uh, yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. Yeah, come on down in there. Yeah, kind of in a squatting position, kind of like, like uh, kind of protecting your butt. You can run at any time. 
get your right leg out and kick, kick yourself a little hole. Okay. I don't know, I started sliding and like, I could just feel my hands like, well, I already have cuts on them, so it was kind of shitty because it was sliding on my cuts. Yeah, so that's the wall we came down last night. Man, what a shit show that was. Just barely got our tents up as it got dark. And the CDT itself could be hard at times because of mileages, elevation gain, weather conditions, whatever. But rarely does it challenge you like this. Cross-country hiking with little information on the area. Almost ensures some tough times, but pretty much guarantees an adventure. A gross venture. That one right there, it actually looks like a thumb or a finger. You can actually see like the, the fingernail on it. Yeah, it does. That's crazy. I think that's what it is. It's like, try me if you dare. Well, after a full day of hiking off trail, we're back on trail here at Shoal Creek. Wow, look at this place. Hey, Katie, you're gonna be in the movie. So are you. <laughs> This easy walking is a nice mental break from all the stuff we were doing yesterday and this morning. And the whole Shoal Creek drainage here has just been incredible. We just passed a youth group and along with three other hikers we saw near Green River a couple days ago were the only hikers we saw this section so far. It just doesn't look like the Grovant gets a whole lot of traffic. With two L's. Two L's? Nice. Love it. So we planned in what? Four days? Four days. Four days. This is day five. <laughs> we have no food. <laughs> we had no food. It's going to take at least another full day, so six days. And all of this food on the table, we were able to <laughs> essentially Yogi. acquire. People offered to us very generously. Yes. Yeah. Super generously. So we're eating like kings tonight. We're going to have snacks tomorrow. Oh, I my that really, <laughs> that really works out. Yeah. So we got, we got all this whole feast here. Yeah. So generous. At the, at, at, at out of all the places, the Granite Springs Campground, mm -hmm. which. <clears throat> I had high hopes for it was that. Just basically a blip on the map. For that road crossing, I did, I didn't expect this, but I. I was I hoping for like a bathroom. Anything. Oh, yeah. and by the way, I was able to get 
<laughs> we know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Toilet paper. <laughs> So this section's been a lot more challenging than I anticipated and planned for. The mileage has been substantially higher than my estimates, and we thought we could cover ground faster than we actually have been. And we're certainly slower as a group, there's no doubt about that. So we're behind schedule right now, and I think it's a sacrifice we're all willing to take in the sake of enjoying this time spent together, but it is going to have to be made up at some point in Idaho and Montana. But hey, that's a problem for future famous. Well, today we could have taken the Granite Highline Trail, but we instead opted to take uh, Granite Creek to Cache Creek instead. And it's pretty much a win-win either way here. Definitely does look like forest fire smoke. I don't smell it though. Wow, this is pretty crazy. So I think Wyoming might be my favorite state so far on the CDT. Yeah, I'm so, so we're camped about two miles outside of Jackson here, and the plan is to walk in, resupply, walk out. Tomorrow, we Jackson. Yeah, all these all these signs in Jackson are definitely interesting so far.